Welcome, my name is Tamara McNair Hicks and this is The Supernatural Collision. I'm so excited you decided to tune in with us today. We have an amazing show for you. This week, God has us on a collision, a collision with dream interpretation. We'll be discussing dreams and visions today. So I'll tell you what, sit back, get ready as we collide with the gift of dream interpretation. excited you guys decided to tune in today. Um, dream interpretation is probably one of the main things that I do. Um, I love this gift. I love this area. I love what God is doing with this. So I hope that you guys will enjoy this. And just so you know, our show will feature people's dreams. So if you want to be able to have your dream interpreted live on our show, all you have to do is email us at dreams with an S at rainfireministries.org and you too may, may be able to have your dream feature. I don't know. We're going to see. We might pick you. We might pick you. So get in there. So we're going to be doing dream interpretation on this show. As you know, dream interpretation um, is an amazing gift. And, you know, dreams and visions mean so much to so many people. As a matter of fact, you spend a third of your life asleep. As a matter of fact, as you think about that, you spend a third of your life asleep and literally one third of the Bible is dedicated to dreams and visions. Did you know that? It's amazing what dreams can do. You can have dreams from God. You have dreams from yourself. You have dreams from the enemy. So it's always important to know which type of dream you're having. You don't want to have a flesh dream. That's what I call a flesh dream, meaning from yourself, your mind, will, and emotions and try to interpret it, right? You want dreams from God, prophetic dreams. What is God saying to you? So you can have different types of dreams and dreams are so amazing. There's no limits in dreams. You can do so much in dreams and dreams are so symbolic. You have symbols, you got colors, you got numbers, you got cards. You have so many things in dreams, but the trick is interpreting them the right way. The only way to truly interpret a dream um, without all our other resources that we use is by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to stop right here just for one second and say this to you. The Holy Spirit should become your best friend. The Bible tells us that he reveals the deep things of God. If you truly want to be a great dream interpreter, the only way to do that is to get close to the Holy Spirit. There's no way around it. You know, I know people are out there doing dreams and interpretation. There's all kind of other sites out there. If you Google search dreams and they come up with all these different sites, well, 80 to 90 percent of those sites have nothing to do with Christianity. And I'm going to say this to you. Dreams come from God. Even if you're not saved, they come from God. It's his way of speaking to us. And so the only way to be accurate in your interpretation and understanding is to get close to the Holy Spirit. So I'm excited today. Today I have a dream that I want to do for you. I'm going to do this person's dream and I may do a dream of my own, but I want you to understand that dream interpretation is so close and dear to my heart. Why? Because you can get a dream from God that's for your destiny, for your future, for your calling. It calls you to do all types of things, but you don't want a, a dream that's about a warning or a correction and you not heed it. It can be detrimental to you as well. So dream interpretation is, is so important to the body of Christ. And like I said, when you're asleep, that's when God's going to talk to you, right? He's going to talk to us all the time, but mostly when you're asleep. Why? Because a lot of times when you're asleep, he has opportunity to speak to you. So I'm not going to prolong this much longer. I'm going to get into this dream. So the dream I'm going to feature today, it comes all the way from the UK. So I'm excited. This person's from the UK and they sent in their dream. And this dream is an amazing dream. I'm going to do is I'm going to read you the dream. Then we're going to walk through the dream together and we're going to talk about it. We're going to discuss it. We're going to see if we can get this dreamer the help that they're looking for. And that's again, I love the fact that I, God has given me the gift of dream interpretation. And one of my goals is to use it to help the body of Christ. We should always use our gifts and callings to what? Advance the body. So let's get into this dream. Let's see what it says. Let's see if God and the Holy, the Holy Spirit is going to come in and talk to us today and help us reveal the information to this, to this amazing dreamer. So let's get to the dream. Again, this dream, it comes from our dreamer, we'll call her Jay from the UK. And here's the dream. The dream. So this dream, I was sitting in my car 
I was sitting in my car and I was watching a group of people. As I was watching this group of people, a lot of turmoil broke out all around them. I was sitting in the car with me and my friend. My friend was in the passenger seat in the front seat. As I was watching, all this turmoil broke out all around. People got into fights and everything. As I'm watching this happen and unfold, the police were called. The police came and they broke up all of the, they broke up the whole fight. Everybody was sent home. Everybody was sent home except for me and my friend. We were sitting there still in the car watching. The car wasn't moving. The police officer walks up to the car. He was very friendly and he began to speak to us. That was the first part of the scene. The dream then changed to me being back out of the car, more people with me, and standing by a table writing in a book with the policeman standing close to my left side. He made sure to point out to me that I was left-handed. I'm not in the natural. To which I, com I commented that I didn't like left-handed people. I had the pen in my hand, but felt awkward holding it. The dream then changed to us being back in my car with me driving. The policeman in the front passenger seat and the female friend in the back, and we were now on the way to a garage to have my purse slash handbag repaired as the closure had broken and the purse now seemed like uh, a lock on a car door. I thought of calling a garage that deals with that type of repair, but ended up stopping at a nearby garage to ask a mechanic friend where to go. He sent me to a nearby repair shop who deals with that type of repair. On arrival, my friend and I, we sat in the car while the policeman stood outside waiting for me. My friend commented that he was just standing there not being helpful. I got out of the car to go to the repair shop and at this point, I awoke from the dream. What an amazing dream. And dreams that are long like this, I have, I call them movie dreams. So all you movie dreamers out there, I got some help for you too. You dream in movies, <laughs> you dream long. I got some help for you today. So let's look at this dream and let's kind of break it down. Um, we're gonna go by paragraph by paragraph. And a lot of times you're gonna see the same or similar themes throughout the dream. So in the first section of her dream, if you remember, she was sitting in the car, her friend was in the passenger seat, and there were all this chaos broke out around them. So what do you think that means? Well, she's in a car, number one, so let's think about the word cars. Cars are gonna represent your ministry or what you're called to do. So at this point, her car is not moving, but she's sitting in the front seat and she's watching all these people around her and it's chaotic. Her friend's also with her in the passenger seat. So this person is riding with her, a person close to her, a person that's with her most of the time, right? And so all this chaos is breaking out all around her and she's watching it. The police are called, they break it all up and tell everybody to leave except for her. Why would they do that? Well, one thing you have to think about is that in her car, she's sitting there, but she's not moving. So if you're in a car and you have a ministry, shouldn't it be moving forward? Well, hers wasn't. She was watching something. What was she watching? Chaos and confusion. So in this part of the dream, we can see that she was focused on the wrong thing. She's looking out her window and she's focused on everything around her, but she's not focused on what she's doing in the car, or her ministry or where she's supposed to go. So here we see that God is bringing the theme in with this particular dream that her focus is off. What she's looking at, the people that she's around. And think about it, there's people all around her, but they were in chaos. They were doing all types of things. And this is where her car was sitting, where it was parked at, meaning that she can't move forward because there's so much confusion around her. And now she needs to figure out how to get her focus off of all the confusion. How many times in your life has the enemy come in and you can't figure out which way to go because there's so much noise? This is when you have to get focused. This is when you have to decide that maybe stuff around me is the wrong focus. Next, what happens is the police officer shows up. He's very friendly to her. And what does he do? He knocks on the window and begins to speak to her. So if somebody knocks on your window, what happens? It gets your attention. So here in this part of the dream, and remember policemen in dreams can be uh, usually like God's agents or they, they bring justice to a situation. So in this part of the dream, God is trying to do something, what? Get the attention, refocus the person. Because right now he needs them to do something and they go somewhere, but right now they're being still. They got somebody in the car with them, but there's a lot of chaos. So once he got rid of all the chaos, remember the police got rid of everybody except for them and he knocked on the window. So God said, I'm gonna remove all the distractions around you. I'm gonna get it all out of your way and I'm gonna bring you back to focus. I need to get your attention. This is an amazing dream. So said, then the dream changed. Now this is a, a, a scene change in the dream. So the, then the dream changed to me being back out of the car, more people with me. Now I'm gonna tell you right here, we see some issues here. <laughs> you know, the, the police came and did what? They moved all the people, but now she's in a car again 
but more people with her. So there's some issues there with the dreamer that she needs to do, kind of be mindful of, right? She says, I'm standing by a table writing in a book with the policeman standing close to my left side. He made sure to point out to me that I was left-handed, I'm not in the natural, to which I commented that I didn't like left-handed people. I had the pen in my left hand, but it felt awkward holding it. So I love this, there's a lot of left hands in here, right? Left, 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 the police is on the left, left-handed, all these things are left. So we're gonna look at what does left mean in dreams? What is left-handed, what is left? You wanna look at those types of things, it's gonna help you begin to focus the dream. Well, for her, she's standing there holding a pen and the policeman says to her, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, she was writing in a book and the policeman standing close to her left side. And he said to her, you know, you're left handed. So this means that the dreamer has some things that God wants her to do, but she doesn't recognize it in herself. It could be writing. It could be uh, something he wants her to do in the writing arena but she can't recognize it. She doesn't even like left-handed people. It, it felt awkward in her left hand, meaning God is calling her to do something that's gonna feel awkward. And left-handed uh, could be, it has some kind of effect of her on her flesh, but also some creative parts of her. So I want you to think about it like this. When the Bible tells you don't go to the left or to the right, it's a lot of times it's telling you don't move, right? But she's got the left hand, meaning that it's going to probably affect her in some kind of way if she doesn't start doing what God's called her to do. All these things on the left, uh, she doesn't like left-handed people. So God wants her to do something. God wants her to do it creatively. She won't feel awkward with it. The pen was awkward in her hands. She's going to feel awkward doing it. But also, it's going to cost her something to her flesh. Left often represents some fleshly things going on in your life. Meaning that I'm going to call you to do something. You probably don't like it. You're probably not going to think it's great. It's going to kill that flesh. You're going to flesh is going to scream about it, but it's something that God wants her to walk in. So she has to be mindful of it. And again, we've seen the other people. So she's going to get rid of these distractions out of her life so she can begin to flow in the things that God wants her to do. So let's look at the last part of the dream. The dream then changed to us being back in my car with me driving. The policeman in the front passenger seat and the female friend in the back. And we were now on the way to a garage to have my purse slash handbag repaired as the closure had broken and now the purse seemed like a lock on the car door. I'm gonna stop right here and we're gonna talk about that part. So I thought it was interesting um, in this dream. She said, we were back in the car, we were driving, but I want you to notice a position change here. The policeman was in the front passenger seat and now the female friend was in the back. So I want you to see the position change there. There's something going on with this friend in the car. They were first in the front, now they're in the back and the policeman is riding there. So that means that she's starting to listen to God. And she's listening to God more than she's listening to her friends, right? And we don't know what kind of friend this is yet, but we'll get into that, right? So we see there's a switch now where God is throwing a switch to get her to focus in on him and to gain her attention. She said, and the female friend now in the back. We were now on the way to a garage to have my purse slash handbag repaired as the closure had broken, and now the purse seemed more like a lock on a car door. I love this. This is amazing. I love how God will show us one thing and then switch it to something else. So she's on her way to a garage. Now she's on her way to a garage. We're talking like a mechanic, the type of a shop to get the car repaired. But she's taking her purse there. Think about that. She's taking her purse or handbag. You wouldn't do that. Then all of a sudden the purse and handbag changed to a, a car door lock. So let's think about it. What would a purse or a handbag mean in dreams? A lot of times it's going to mean something that's precious to you. Women, we keep our purses, we keep our wallets, we keep our money, we keep, our, we keep everything, ID. I mean, you know, we can have a whole store in our purse. And when we lose our purse, we lose our mind, okay? So she has her purse, she has her handbag. So that means all the things that are precious to her are in this purse, right? But it has to be repaired. This is a signal to the dreamer that there's some issues of the heart that need to be taken care of. Listen. The heart, listen, oh, she got to take care of these heart issues. If she does not take care of these heart issues, it's going to cause her a problem. Why? Because literally the purse, the handbag turned into a car lock on the door. Meaning that some people are able to get into her car that shouldn't be there. And maybe it's the friend, right? Maybe she's allowing people into her life who shouldn't come in because of the heart issue 
or she's not allowing people or she's not having the right proper boundaries that she needs to have because the door lock is broken. That means she's allowing people to run in and out of her life all because she's been stung. She might have been hurt, could be rejection, but whatever the trauma was, it has to be repaired so she can properly go in the car where God wants to take her in her ministry. So this is so amazing to me how God will do that. He will show us the precious things in our lives and how we allow people to come through doors that should not be able to come through them. So let's move on a little bit further in her dream. She said, I thought of calling a garage that deals with this type of repair, but ended up stopping at a nearby garage to ask a mechanic friend where to go. He sent me to a nearby repair shop who deals with that type of repair. Now think about this. She said, I was going to call a garage, but it said I stopped at one because I knew a mechanic personally. So I love this because God is saying, sometimes we just kind of call out to God, right? We're just like, God, do this, God, do that. We're just calling, calling, calling. But God said, when you got saved, you've always been mine. I've always known you. You've always been in my hand. And so he said to her, you don't need to be trying to call out like they do with Baal worship. Come on, you're not up there with Elijah. They're cutting themselves and they're calling. No, you already know me. Listen, I am already yours. All you got to do is come to me and ask me, seek me and you shall find me. And so she said, I stopped at the mechanic. Come on, somebody, because he already knew you. So she stopped and she got back on track. She got back into her prayer life. If she does these things, God's going to show her specifically. Let me tell you what I love about dreams and visions. God will give us instruction. Come on, somebody. He will teach us. If we go to God, he said, ask me, seek me. If you knock, he said, you'll find me. And this is what God wants her to do. And so he said, don't just be calling out random. You know my name. Call me and I'll answer you. And so she called the mechanic friend. So she said, I call, I'll stop by. I talked to the friend and he told me exactly where to go. On arrival, my friend and I, we sat in the car, and while the policeman stood outside waiting for me, my friend commented that he was just standing there not helping me. Come on with this friend. What kind of friend is this? Listen, when you have friends in your life who are always pointing out negative things, you got to be mindful of that. The policeman has been there. The policeman has been uh, helping. The policeman has been very helpful, but the friend is trying to say they're not even helping you. They're standing outside the car. They're not doing anything for you. Recognize that you have people in your life who are always pointing out the negative. They're not ever sharing with you in the positive. This friend was in the front seat while the chaos was going on. So this particular friend or friends or people like this in her life, she needs to think about removing them. When you have people in your life and they are, who suck on you, who are leeches and things like that, you need to let those people go. I'm not saying being mean to them. You don't have to tell them off. But what you do need to do is let them go pray for them. But you need to move into arenas with people who can do something for you, who can help you in your destiny, who can push you to your next level. This friend was only pointing out the negative. OK, then she says, I got out of the car to go to the repair shop. <clears throat> At this point, I woke from the dream. So I got the car to go to the repair shop. And at this point, I woke from the dream. So I love this part because at the end of the, at the end of her dream, she got out of the car to go to the repair shop. And so that means that what? She finally made a decision to follow God. She made a decision that no matter what people are saying, things around her, uh, all the other things, she said, I'm going to I'm going to follow God. I started a path with him. I'm going to get myself together and I'm going to refocus. I'm going to move my ministry in the right direction. So this was an amazing dream. So dreamer, we just want to pray for you. We're asking God to bless you. We're asking God to keep you. We're asking God to continue to push you in the right path. I love this dream. It's an amazing dream. And so you too, again, you can have the same type of thing. Just email us. We would love to feature your dream on here. But I want to share something with you guys today. Recently, I had a dream and you can have dreams and visions. Um, Again, you can have when you're awake, you can have a dream. Um, You can have a sleeping vision. So it's not necessarily by whether you're awake or not. It's whether you have a lot of symbolism or if it's more literal. And we'll get into that in one of our further uh, episodes. But this time I did something called 40 days of prayer. And we were praying for 40 days. We prayed for miracles. We were praying. Uh, They had another 10 days of prayer. So we do a lot of prayer as a part of our ministry. We believe in praying at Rainfire Ministry. So if you're not a prayer, come on. You got to learn how to pray, okay? (laughs) But we love to pray at our ministry. We believe that it opens heaven and brings God closer to us. And I just love it. We have to get into prayer um, in our life. You cannot really do anything in God without prayer. If you're a prophet, especially, and you tell me you don't pray, I don't want your prophecy. I'm just going to let you know. I need a praying prophet. Amen. So what I'm saying is this, though. 
during one of our prayer sessions, the Lord took me into a vision. And I often get a lot of visions during prayer as well. But this one really, to me, identified with what's coming as part of the next season of our life. And I do believe we're already entered into a new season. So during this particular prayer session, I'm just going in and I'm praying. And all of a sudden, I go into uh, this particular vision. Now, in this particular vision, I'm kind of standing, uh, watching in. And it reminded me of uh, the chapter, I think about 14 in Luke, where, they were, where the man was preparing a, a, a banquet Right. So it was a parable about a man preparing a banquet and he was preparing it for the people to come in. He invited the people to come in. They said, we're too busy. We're not coming. Right. So he said, go out and gather all the other people. Right. And so it reminded me of that because in the vision, I could see the Lord standing behind a table. And as he was standing there, he was rearranging the tables. They were flipping like this, flipping like this, flipping like this. And when he finally flipped and turned, they were all kind of facing this way. And so he was standing behind them, but he was decorating all the tables. He was putting white tablecloths on them. I mean, it reminded me of a wedding. It was beautiful. The tables, the goblets. I mean, it was phenomenal. It was so pretty. I remember looking at it thinking, wow, this would be amazing for a wedding. Um, matter of fact, we used to do, um, we used to have an event planning business. So it reminded me of that so much. I love how God will use those different things in your life, in your visions and dreams. And so it was beautiful setup gorgeous. And then all of a sudden I seen these gold goblets begin to appear. They appeared all over the tables. And then the particular table that the Lord was standing at, it was probably like four or five of these gold goblets and there were wine in each of them. And as I'm looking at them, I see all these people begin to come in. So people begin to flow. They begin to come into the room. And then all of a sudden God did something that I have not seen before. He lit them on fire. Boom, 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 boom. All the goblets and the wine in them were on fire. And these people began to come into the room. So remind me of another invitation. In that, in that parable in Luke, God was inviting people to come. And some didn't want to come. But the ones that did come, they, they were able to partake. And remember, that's how we as Gentiles were able to come into the body of Christ. And so these goblets are sitting there. They're on fire. They're beautiful. And people begin to come into the room. As they come into the room, they begin to pick up these goblets. Some people are sitting down at different tables. They pick these goblets up and they begin to drink them. And as they drink them, this thing happened to them. I seen them drink and drink. And then all of a sudden this fire shot up through their face into their eyes. And the eyes did like this. And I could see flames. So everybody who picked a cup up and drunk it, that was what happened to them. And so then I came out of the vision. And the Lord began to speak to me about this vision. First, so first of all, again, a lot of times you see in dreams and visions, it's going to be a likened to some kind of scriptural text. Always look for scripture. Always look for biblical understanding of your dreams and visions. And so the Lord gave me that scripture in Luke where it talked about him inviting. So there's a new invitation for this season that's being sent out to the people. God is inviting us into a new season. And the thing I love about it, though, is that in this one, the tables were turning. The tables were turning. The tables were turning. That means that God's about to turn the tables in this new season. It's going to be something different, not like before as he begins to turn and shift these tables. And the thing I loved about it was there are these goblets there with wine. And I remember one time I had a vision where the, this goblet had wine in it and the hand came out and it turned the glass up and tapped it. Tap, tap, tap. He said, drink ye all of it, right? He said, drink all of it, all the bitterness, drink all of it. They were drinking these goblets, meaning that God's going to do something new in your body. Wine. It was the wine. It's a new wineskins. It's new. So God's going to do something, a new testament. Come on, a new wineskin. It's about to do something new in you. And those who drink and partake of it, what happened to them? There was a fire that lit, a fire that began to burn, a fire that burned in them. I know that we're going through a hard season right now. We have COVID-19. We've had hurricanes. We've had storms. We've got fires burn out of control. We have a lot of things going on right now in the earth. But what is God showing us? He said, even though there's a lot of things going on, he said, I'm just going to mix some things up. I'm turning some things around. I'm, I'm rearranging some things. He says, I'm, I'm stirring things up. You know, they say stir up the gift. I'm stirring some things up in your life to cause you to begin to come into this new season. In this season, he said, I'm looking for those who are willing to drink of the new cup. Come on, somebody. It's a new season. It's a new time. It's a new opportunity for you to to be a what a partaker of this new thing that God's doing and I've seen the people walk in some of them look confused not really sure what to do but they picked up the cup and they drank it come on who can step by faith in this season by faith you got to come in there and drink up the cup listen there's some going to be some bitterness at the bottom of that cup but the, at the top of that cup was some fire that
That means that God said, I want you to drink of this new thing. It's going to cause a new fervor, a new fire, a new burning, a refreshing, a restoring. We know that fire does several things in scripture, but for in this particular dream, what did it do? One, the fire comes to purify. Come on, somebody. It's going to burn out some things on the inside of you that just been in you. God's going to burn them out. And then two, what is it going to do? That fire is going to come to what? Reignite you. I know you're going through a hard season. You might have some grief or some things in your life, but God's going to reignite you. So what God wants to do in your life is to give you a new testament, a new season, and light you on fire with what? The glory of God. I'm so excited for those in this season who, are, who God's inviting into the glory realm. He's going to invite you in in this season. I know there's some things that are going on in your life, but I want to tell you right now, like the first dream, get your focus. Come on, focus, on, focus in on God in this season. Get into prayer. Get into the Holy Spirit. He wants to do something new in your life. I love this dream. I love it in this particular vision because God is literally inviting us right now. I even want to invite you right now. And some people that watch may not even be saved. You might say, I just want to hear what she had to say. If you're not saved, I want to invite you into the kingdom of God. It's so important that you begin to understand who God is. You might be watching. You might have been in the occult. You might be in some different practices. And you're saying, I want some of that. Well, what God wants to do is he wants to invite you to the table. And so we're just putting the plea out there for you to be invited to the table. I'm so excited you decided to tune in again today. A supernatural collision. I believe that God is going to use this to bless your life. I believe you didn't tune into that by accident, that he really wanted to say something to you through that dream with the focus. Come on, getting some people out of your life. There's some things going on that God wants to push. He wants to get out of your life so that you can regain your focus. It might be, maybe it's a creative gift you have that you don't feel so comfortable with, but whatever it is that God is doing in your life, listen, let him do it brand new like the goblet. Listen, I'm, I'm going to invite you to take a drink today. Let God do something new in your life. Let let him rearrange you. Let him just come into your life. Let him reignite you and bring a new fire. Let God do it for you because God wants to do it. Now, thank you so much for tuning in to Supernatural Collision. We thank you so much for tuning in. Tune in next week as we go further. Thank you for being with us. We trust you've been greatly blessed by this session. For more info and further training, visit us at www.rainfireministries.org. The Seer Advantage from Tamara McNair-Hicks and Rainfire Ministries. Order today.